All right, let's get into this. Uh, yesterday, after the show, I live streamed the uh, vote, and uh, there were three um, flippers. Do we know why they flipped? It was Corey Mills, a freshman Republican from Florida, and Warren Davidson, Republican of Ohio, and um, Victoria Sparks, Republican of Indiana. So, I, but Corey Mills did respond to somebody. Um, I'll put his I'll, one second. I will put his tweet up here if you wanted to see why he um, didn't. Uh, well, we'll go into that later. Okay. But there were three defectors from the eleven who voted to uh, against the motion to table. Um, it's unclear, you know, what happened. I mean, I we watched the. Uh, did we watch we it together? The motion the, to table. The motion to table, and I think, uh, and I don't know if we watched the um, uh, the arguments in favor. It was mostly Gates. Gates was uh, mostly like having to do the argument uh, from the Democratic uh, podium mm -hmm. because the Republicans wouldn't let him get to a microphone. Um, he's pretty much hated in the uh, Republican caucus now which is only a big deal if he wanted to actually achieve uh, anything beyond what he's done. And um, he probably doesn't. He's probably doing, uh, you know, brand building. And I think he's been quite successful at that. But let's watch uh, some of the key moments from the vote yesterday. On this vote, the yeas are 216. The nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. So there you have that. And then the um, House pro temp, uh, right? Is that is what it's called? Yeah. House pro temp uh, McHenry uh, took the gavel. So basically, you have an acting Speaker of the House. There is um, some controversy uh, because uh, the Republicans apparently uh, took away offices uh, that f uh, the House minority leaders generally have from uh, Hoyer and I guess Pelosi. I don't know why she still, frankly, had an office. I guess it was just a common courtesy to ex speakers of the house apparently that's something they do to ex speakers of the house when they're still in office they have an office in the capitol building so she's more able to easily do business as opposed to having her regular office i mean i don't care but i don't care either and, but it's but just still petty by them it was petty but what's also interesting it's unclear that whether the essentially acting speaker of the house has that authority uh, to make those decisions. Pelosi's but, not in the building. She's in California for Feinstein's funeral. So they're like trying to clear out oh, her they office did. when they she's did. not there. They right. already did that. And they did that with us, Danny Hoyers as well. But nevertheless, here is the uh, acting um, Speaker of the House. And uh, this is moments after the vote. He was unhappy. Chair declares the House in recess subject to the call of the chair. And he wanted to make sure everybody uh, saw that, and he was going to bang that gavel. That yeah. is, that is a, a angry gavel banging. I'd cut it back like ten percent. Yeah, I got to be honest. If I if I had the gavel, I would be banging it like that all the time. See I wouldn't have done it, it just once. Oh I would just yeah, keep doing it. See if you can break it. It's like one of those carnival games. I'd be <laughs> knocking it like Neil Pert. Here's Kevin McCarthy uh, after the the vote, and um, uh, this is Kevin McCarthy. Um, one of the interesting things was in listening to the arguments as to why people were voting against him. Uh, Nancy Mace will play this a little bit later. The guy seems to be just, it was just one of those situations where you're lying to everybody about everything and they just all, all the lies ca catch up to you. Like this is, you know, th it, like, it, it's like a guy in Survivor, uh, Honestly, uh, this, this seems like a ridiculous uh, example, but this is so blatant, it actually works. Who lies to everybody, and it, for a couple of rounds, they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, everybody realizes, like, hey, they, wait a second. They compare notes. I thought <laughs> we were in a uh, coalition together, and uh, but here he is. Basically, the last lie we probably will be subjected to from Kevin McCarthy, because no one's going to pay any attention to him after this. My goals have not changed. Amass power and wealth. My ability to fight is just in a different form. <laughs> Lobbying soon. You need soon. 218. 
Unfortunately, 4% of our conference can join all the Democrats a deal and I dictate made. who can be the Republican speaker in this house. I don't think that rule is good for the institution, but apparently I'm the only one. Pause nope, it. Punk, now here nope, is, here is what is amazing <laughs> about that. That rule exists only because he offered it as a way for him to achieve the yes. power that he wanted. He is Period. so End of power story. hungry that he there was 15 rounds of voting in January, right? In order to determine if he was House Speaker, it was took way longer. It was another historic moment of dysfunction in selecting a speaker. And to get the power he wanted, he conceded that authority, saying that anybody in his caucus or anybody could call up a motion to vacate the speaker and just hold a vote right away. So he's lying and saying, er, lying by omission at the very least, and calling it a bad deal that he doesn't like. You are the one that put it in place, you moron. Well, yeah, so I mean, he knows that. And it's just more an example of his, uh, his, 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 his ability to lie, but continue. The Republican speaker in this house. I don't think that rule is good for the institution, but apparently I'm the only one. I believe Just I can me. continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. A violin music. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. <laughs> oh, All right, and so uh, let's be clear. This is what uh, McCarthy's plan is. McCarthy's plan is to continue. Remember, he's uh, the biggest, one of the biggest fundraisers in the, uh, we say, probably the biggest fundraiser in Congress itself in the house at least for the republicans and um he's going to continue to fundraise he's not going to run for speaker he's not going to resign because he wants to continue to fundraise although although i would suspect if there is reason to believe that the republicans uh might lose their majority he might make a mad dash to k street now to cash in but more than likely he'll try and um, uh, fundraise for republicans he will do this with the hopes that they regain or they maintain uh the the house they probably won't and and he wants to maintain these relationships with the 200 uh, or so republicans who voted for him 205 or whatever it is and you know some he could have stayed in office had he made any type of deal with the Democrats, and they made a lot of offers, apparently, he wanted none of that. And I think part of the reason why he didn't, or I should say the reason why he didn't, is because he knew that that would be unsustainable with his caucus. It would have been sh short term, kept him in office. Ultimately, he would have been uh, voted out or would have had to resign. I don't know why he didn't resign when he saw it was quite obvious this was happening. And it would have soured his relationships with some percentage of the Republican caucus. And that those relationships is money to him. Yeah. He will go, there is, you know, I would bet everything I own, he's going to go into some lobbying firm or maybe, you know, some quasi think tank lobbying firm mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a front for lobbying. And he wants to make sure that there are 150 doors that he can knock on, 200 doors that he can knock on, having done them a favor. And that is value that he turns around and monetizes. Not unlike, you know, like, uh, I don't know, every other, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Not unlike Cantor, not unlike Ryan, not unlike the other young guns that were the uh, the the speakers of the, uh, of the House, the Republican leaders who were supposed to usher in this new hot era of conservatism. Or tons of other, you know, I mean, Democratic politicians. Sure. Too. I mean, it happens but, all the time. But but it is just notable, again, the, the fact that this is historic, the hallmark, uh, the, the, na the nature of how representative it is of dysfunction. I want just a few quick things before we, we get to to our guests just point out good test for hakeem jeffries i might not like him on a political perspective right he's further to the right the israel stuff i don't like but in terms of playing partisan this guy's a liar he won't drop the impeachment inquiry he won't do any of the things that we say and won't speak to us in good faith 
vote in tandem, keep the caucus together, vote yes on the motion to vacate. And that was engaging in partisanship in the right way. And two, now, like, it's going to be probably a dogfight between Scalise and Jim Jordan. Scalise is the guy that described himself reportedly as David Duke without the baggage. And Jim Jordan is the guy credibly accused of covering up sexual assault of wrestlers in o- at Ohio State. The best and the brightest of the Republican Party, those are the two guys they're going to bring to the fore. And just make sh- make uh, understand where they're at at this point and don't root for anybody in this situation root for maximum chaos and that's why yesterday was a good day and it's good that hakeem jeffries understood the value of creating that chaos for them yeah we'll we'll talk uh, more about that later i mean there's never been a um there's never been a speaker of the house i think elected at least in in, in decades that uh, received any votes from the opposite party um, and, you know, apparently uh, some of the problem solvers are talking about the Republican problem solvers are talking about uh, getting out of their problem solving caucus because oh. their Democratic friends wouldn't vote with them. Breaking, but we got a lot more to heart. talk about that. And also, you know, um, uh, in terms of uh, of uh, Jim Jordan. Tradition. I mean, I, this happened during the aughts when you had a series of uh, of. Um, of speakers having to step down in a row. Um, Bob Livingston was up for speaker and then he had to ju- uh, step down after uh, Newt mm-hmm. Gingrich, uh, after the impeachment of, of Clinton, because he, he had an affair and it was going to come out in Hustler. And so he had to step down. And that's how uh, we got Denny Hastert. And if tradition in the Republican Party is that when you lose a speaker, you go to a guy who has been involved in wrestling mm-hmm. and uh, um, a molestation of children. That's what Denny Hastert uh, was. And so I don't know. We'll see if they can maintain that tradition. Oh, beautiful. But, um, in the meantime, uh, Santos we, for speaker, baby. That's we're what going I'm to. For. Uh,